Okay guys, so I want to talk to you today about how to use filter Anki decks during dedicated. So hopefully by this point you used Anki throughout your at least your second year of medical school and you're pretty familiar with the program. If you're not, again, I'm going to make a second video to teach you how to kind of get familiar with it and how to set it up uh, and use it for these purposes. But for anybody who's already familiar with using it, this is, video is basically on how to transition from using med school Anki to dedicated Anki. The biggest difference between medical school and, and dedicated is time. I used to spend four or five hours on Anki every day in medical school and you simply can't do that during dedicated. You're going to get an hour or two maybe tops. So you really want to make it super, super efficient and filter decks allow you to do that. So what I would used to do is do huge blocks of 300, you know, cardio cards or 300 renal cards, whatever we were learning that week or that module. But when you do that, say you have 100 cards, probably 50 of them you already know. They're either counterintuitive to you, you studied them before, or you have them memorized from class. The other 50 you don't know. So you can go through the 50 ones you do know and hit, you know, don't see for a week and use the algorithm, but that does eat into your time. I want you to focus on the 50 cards you don't know. I'd rather you spend the same amount of time and get through the 50 you don't know twice than get through the 50 you do know once and the ones you don't know twice. So then the question becomes, how do you know you don't know something? Because at this point, you've hopefully watched the boards and beyond, done the first aid, done the sketchy. You know all the material but what don't you have memorized? And that's when questions come in. So every morning you're gonna do your 40 or 80 block, um, whatever your schedule tells you to do, and then you're gonna review those questions. And when you get a question wrong, you're proving you don't know it. You're proving that even though you've studied lupus six times, you're still getting a question wrong on lupus. So clearly that fact or that manipulation of that fact, the way they're asking you about it, you don't know. So ideally, you know, we'd all get through UWorld like six times and we'd see all the questions over and over again, but that's not real life. At most, you're going to get through it twice. But if you have an Anki card for every question you get wrong and you do that Anki card every single day, then in turn, you're basically doing that question 40 times before you take the test day. So I might not get to, for sure, do my incorrects 40 times on UWorld, but I can do my incorrects every day in a few seconds on Anki, and that's going to really, really solidify the things I don't know and make them the things I do know. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you my Anki. So, so here's all my step one decks. I've got my step two decks now, but what we're going to be focusing on is the stuff, step one stuff. So. Say I just did the same example, I just got a question wrong on lupus anticoagulants. So I'm going to hit browse, and since there's a pretty good search engine here, I don't even have to search all the words. I can type in anti-PTT, and it gives me, you know, a few cards here. I'm going to scroll along until I see the word, you know, acquired, no, immune, no, warfare, oh, lupus. Okay, that's what I was talking about, lupus, PTT. Lupus anticoagulant is an antiphospholipid antibody that results in falsely elevated PTT. So this is a fact that even though I watched the boards and I've done first aid, I just didn't remember that it was if it was PTT or PT or bleeding time. Okay, so easy. All I'm going to do is I'm going to tag it as incorrect. Boom. So right down here, tag incorrect. So now this is going to be able to put it into my filter deck so I can see it. So I can close out of here. You know, there might be a couple other cards on lupus that I want to tag as incorrect. That's pretty much the same one. Um, so we won't put those in there, but you could find as many as you want on the material that you got wrong. And then you're going to go up here to tools, and you're only going to have to do this step once. So you hit create filter deck, and you're going to put tag, because you're telling the filter deck, I want you to search for anything that has been tagged incorrect. And then you put space, parentheses, is colon new, or is colon do. And that's just saying that you don't want only new cards that you've tagged, you want your reviews as well. And then you can change your limit to 100, 200, whatever you want, and you hit build. Okay, and your filter deck will appear towards the top. And look, there's three cards in it. First thing I want to do is rename it. So I want to put a asterisk first, 
because otherwise the filter deck alphabetically will move down here and then it will get buried. So I want it to be the very first thing I see because that's really all I'm going to be doing every day. And I am changing it to incorrect. So that's the very first thing I see. I can click on it and I can hit study now and I can go through these three cards that I definitely do not know. Same way I would usually use Anki. Every morning, you're going to have to hit rebuild, and that's going to take all the cards that you tagged yesterday from your blocks, and is going to rebuild them and put them into this deck. You don't really do want to do that in the middle of the day, because it will mess up the algorithm, but every morning before you start your Anki, you're going to hit rebuild. So now that you have this deck, every time you go to browse, and you click on a card, and you don't know it, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is louder with Valsalva, you can hit tag, you can put incorrect, and it will automatically go into that deck, which is really great. Additionally, you can have a couple couple filter decks. I wouldn't go crazy with this. I had three. So nope was my incorrect deck. It was things I got wrong, things I didn't want to get wrong again on test day. Marked was things that when I went through first aid or U World or sketchy, I saw and I was like, whoa, I don't remember that at all. So for instance, I was reading the lupus section, or the antiphospholipid section, and I saw that it increased PTT, and I was like, wow, that's a detail I don't remember. Let me type, instead of incorrect, I'll type marked, and I'll have this marked deck, and I'll make the deck the same way. Twice Stupid was a deck I made towards the end of Dedicated when I started redoing UWorld. And this is actually pretty impressive because even though I had been doing the questions, the Anki every day on things I got wrong, there were still some questions I got wrong twice when I did redo UWorld which really just, once again, confirms the fact that when we're bad at something, we're always going to be bad at it. Your strengths are your strengths, and your weaknesses are your weaknesses. Don't spend four days trying to get through all the cardio cards when you're good at cardio, and you're bad at renal. Do the renal cards. Don't do all the renal cards. Do the RTAs, because that's what you're bad at. So even though I was doing those every day, there were still some things that didn't click the second time around, which just shows you again how important it is to do these cards, because you're always going to have weaknesses and you want to obliterate those for dedicated. Your strengths will always carry you through. But this is a way to really spend a couple hours a day or even a hour a day going through the things you got wrong and making sure you never get them wrong again. So feel free to uh, comment with any questions or um, send me any messages about this. Hopefully it's pretty intuitive. If you haven't started dedicated yet, I encourage you to start playing with this, start playing with your filter decks and getting comfortable with them because honestly, there's no other way to use Anki during dedicated. There's no point in going through big chunks of decks. The only exception would maybe be like, okay, you're really bad at anatomy, do an anatomy deck, something like that. But for the most part, you should only be doing your filter decks and your marked deck on things that you have proven over and over again you don't know and you got wrong or things that you for sure just don't know. All right, guys, uh, good luck, and I'll be posting a video on my dedicated schedule to, uh, my dedicated schedule soon, and I'll also be posting a video on how to set up Anki for the first time in medical school.